pictures? Yes. tonight. Uh, at this time, I will call to order the regularly scheduled board meeting for the Village of Minolfian, July 18th, 2018, at 7 p.m. Roll call, please. Trustee Kamey? Trustee Crowley? Here. Trustee Gillis? Here. Trustee Ivan? Here. Trustee Killey? Here. Trustee Christ? Here. Mayor LaRue? Here. You have a call. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence for our fallen veterans. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Is there any members of any village commissions or committees here tonight? Jean that is all. George? Any members of any local organizations here tonight? Thank you all for coming out. At this time, I'll open the floor to public comment. If you would like to be made a matter of public record, please stand, state your name and address. Carol. My name is Carol. My address is 144 <coughs> Avenue. Mayor, you are telling me our house has normal foundation cracks. I'm naming all the people that agree. Engineer Nagel, Superintendent Steering, the general contractor that was at the house, who wouldn't agree that a house could have normal foundation cracks. That is not what I am reporting here. There are building codes this village has the responsibility of upholding. Skip Strobertson from this village building department told me she does not have permission to have that driveway next door painted <coughs> like that. 328.17. Building Superintendent William D. Simone told me it would be a 70% fix. The repair of the sump pump and the turned gutters. On 328.18, D. Simone admitted to me there is standing water flooding in our yard from the driveway next door. He also indicated he is willing to help get the driveway fixed. On 4218, De Simone declared the driveway next door as illicit, unlawful water. And he mentioned the word flooding also. This is when he told me he is ready to work on the driveway next door. He also told me he can do something about illicit, unlawful water. The building department of this village has already taken the time to study and research the situation with the driveway next door. They have already determined 
and told me they can and will help get that driveway next door fixed. Please continue on and move forward with the work that needs to be done on that driveway next door. Skip Scrubberton in the building department is a code enforcement officer. Please ask him to do his job. He can issue a permit to her with instructions that this village is to be involved in the driveway repair and see to it that the work is done and done properly. She told me around the end of the year in 2016, maybe it was in November, she was planning to redo her driveway the following year, which would be 2017. She must have the money to have the work done to tell me this. She said it was going to cost thousands of dollars. The sump pump next door that we ordered fixed at the Midlothian Village Board meeting of 627-18 is not fixed yet. It was requested it be fixed before another storm and flood, before it falls off. Have you noticed the weather report can change from day to day, just as the weather can change from day to day? Around 10.15 p.m. last night, 7.10.18, the sun pump post was at the back of her house by the back door again. It was reported to the police department. I'll talk to Skip. Right. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Thank you. Uh, good evening, Valerie Weisberg. Uh, standing before you guys for probably one of the last times because I'm going to be moving out of town soon. So, if I may stand before you about as ignorant and as stupid as I've been in quite a while, I have not studied meeting minutes, I have no videos, but I have a few questions. And if you bear with me for a moment, it's actually water related, but it is South Suburban Joint Action Water Agency related, and it's actually maybe a Attorney Valadez type of direction, but I'm not sure. So, I just wanted to bring up really quick that it was brought to my attention that apparently on February 2nd of 2018, there was some sort of default judgment that was filed uh, and approved by Judge Mitchell in the appeals court in favor of a $7.9 million settlement kind of thing where I have been assured that this village, none of the villages are accountable for, although there's no money kind of thing, but legally speaking, the village is not on the hook for that dollar amount. But I guess I'm looking for that clarity, and this is where Attorney Valdez, you might be able to help, although you may not be the right person. How many lawsuits are in existence in at least, because my count is two, maybe three. The one that has the February 2nd date stamp dealing with uh, Postal and your arguing breach contract. <coughs> but there's one other one that I had the impression through meeting minutes that you may or may not have ever seen because you are more new to the circumstance. Um, that had to do, for example, with the domain ownership name. Uh, there was also a postal in your lead lawsuit. How many lawsuits does this village, you know, has this village faced with this Jawa stuff that you're aware of? Can you speak to them? I could speak to what you have described as being fairly accurate, and I don't know anything about the last part about a separate action with regard to the name. Okay, and I can't give clarity because the way the meeting minutes ran, it had to do with a postal going out and finding the .org, uh, and then there was some sort of battle, I don't know, but it resulted in the organization finding the .com, and there's two domains out there, and that leads to another question, by the way, that, that is important that I've done in this room before. I'm in a FOIA void right now with Java, you know, and maybe you disagree with my pursuit of this information, but, the domain name has been privatized, which means money was spent to go ahead and hide the identity of who actually owns a government, theoretically, government website. So with my understanding of the last attorney, um, I believe it was um, Michael Stillman, uh, and somebody else was then hired after him, but you know what I mean? It was like, there was a long period. <laughs> 
of just nothing. How would somebody, or how? It, the idea that the village can't even try and find out, I guess, I hope I'm going to inspire you guys to think about. Because I don't think you have an answer, you know, off the cuff, I don't think that would be maybe appropriate. But if all of you would consider just for a moment that domain name issue that I'm thinking may have some legal stuff still roaming, because that leads me to the next thing. Apparently, we did settle the $300,000 bond that was taken out for this project, and now the Beta Bank did return to the village. Uh, approximately $45,000-ish is my understanding. And for example, I just learned today that at Blue Island uh, meeting last night, they received $15,000 in their refund. So that was kind of a little confusing. I did speak to a trustee who was able to give me some idea that there was an escrow matter, and I don't understand totally. But even that kind of information, I, I think I'd be wasting your guys' time looking for answers rather than my challenge. And you guys, I hope these kind of questions start entering your guys' mind if you guys take the initiative to find out more about what's going on kind of thing, unless there is someone you can speak to that. Because we're trying to figure out how that refund was calculated. It didn't make sense, you know, because Blue Island has a larger percentage of the water. Usage, so they had a larger percentage of the deal. So why would they only get, and again, I'm not trying to put anyone on the spot. It's just, again, that was announced last night. And for someone like me, you know, where do I go for answers, right? You know, and for me, it was coming here. So the other thing would be this. Please consider, I don't know how it can be done, but <coughs> us still apparently being legally attached is a reputation drag on the village. Even that 7.912 judgment irritates the heck out of me. <laughs> kind of notion. I get why it happened. Doesn't mean it's acceptable kind of place. And I guess tonight I'm pleading to all of you to, you know, instead of maybe worrying about all these details, you know, that I'm bringing up my own thought, you guys have become more of an advocate, especially when it comes to, you know, the South Suburban Joint National Water Agency, the water in general. There's so much confusion out there. This is just an old one that's still new. <laughs> you know, February 2nd of this year, kind of. Stuff. And here I'm only finding about it, get it, last week. You know, and supposedly I'm somebody who keeps track of all this kind of stuff. I don't. You know, so thank you for at least allowing me just to ramble a bit about some of my own confusion. That's why I said I may be ignorant about all of it. I appreciate the statistic, at least on the, the, the account that you're aware of. You know, because I don't have database to access <laughs> kind of thing. So I'm all good. So I appreciate that. And the last thing I was going to do is this. Um, apparently we're not getting the Mark Water Commission meeting minutes. In, or is that misinformation to me? No, just misinformation. Okay, so you guys are in receipt of the March Water Meeting minutes on a consistent yes. so Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Alan Dragowski, I live on Kenton. I'm here tonight again about the properties at Knox. I'm at 14601 and the four properties next to me. Um, Started coming here about a year ago almost now, talking about the zoning that got changed at some point in the past. Um, we really made no headway. Uh, Bill Lee Simone was working on some stuff I understood early on last year or about a year ago. Um, and since then, I've had nothing. Um, a couple things I have here with a couple different purposes. I have a $9,300 tax bill on my two-unit building on Max. I have the Cook County Assessor site staying. I have a two-unit building on Max. I have a water bill from the village that I get monthly because residential properties get billed multi-monthly. Max gets billed monthly. So I guess I'm kind of looking at two different things. One is and all of these items, the tax bill, the water bill, um, and my vehicle stickers, um, if I don't pay them, these entities have teeth. They bite. The county takes the property, the water department turns off my water, the, uh, the village gives me a ticket for not having vehicles. I don't have any teeth. So now a year later, I'm trying to fix this zoning issue. I've gotten nowhere. And I'm looking to find out if one, 
I can make any headroom of that. Four months now, I go in on the 25th and I pay my water bill and I say, can you have somebody call me? Can you have somebody email me? Anybody? Four months. Not a word, not an email. So I had to make a decision, and that is I need to get teeth. So CBS, NBC, Fox, Chicago Tribune, The Herald, and unfortunately, my attorney has to be the next phone call. So I'm hoping that between now and the 25th, when I come in to pay this next water bill, somebody can reach out to me and say, hey, you know, we're going to make some headway. We're going to work on this. We're going to figure out how to fix the situation. Because I'm not going to take the beating. Paying a $9,500 tax bill on a two-unit building that you're telling me is a single-family residence. You know, Karen Kalinowski down the street did sell her property. About $45,000 undervalued as a single family versus a multi-unit. I don't think anybody sitting here would put up with that. So, Mayor, I'm asking you, who should I get a call from? You should have gotten a letter from the billing department about a uh, legal non-conforming status of your property that you could use to... Have nothing. Okay, I apologize for that. I was under the impression that that letter was being worked on, so... But a legal non-conforming does not fix the situation. So we're back in the hole again. Because legal non-conforming does not let me rebuild this 51% burden or destroy it, which means a lender will not be finding funding on it. So it's either it's only the way it was, which I'm understanding nobody can find out how that got rezoned legally or illegally. I mean, there's a lot of gaps. The bottom line is, it needs to be fixed. And I'd rather do it here with the people mm -hmm. in town. I mean, I've been a resident for 35 years. Then have to go through media sources and attorneys. Mm -hmm. I mean, so hopefully I hear from somebody. I'm getting tired of asking the Absolutely. Spot zoning. <laughs> we're, we're not, legally the village is not allowed to do spot zoning and that's what that would be. understand. So that's why the legal solution was to provide you with a letter stating that it's legally non-performing and that would allow you to buy, sell, take out a home equity loan, you know, um, Does it? repair. Does it? Not without a rebuild letter. Do you need a rebuild letter? And we're good. True? Well, no, that's that's not true. Um, I, I think what I think you're attributing a lot of the afflictions that you're having as a property owner in that area to how it's zoned. And the bottom line is that this is a, an occurrence which happens in every municipality everywhere. If I went to Oak Forest, or if I went to Poston, you went, there's going to be a couple of properties in a very small area that for whatever, whatever reason is not, they were built or allowed to be built in a way that is not in compliance with the surrounding properties. So the problem that you face is that the rezoning that you are requesting would, by the description and the size of your units, make it incompatible with what we were doing. And that is where the spot zoning comes in. You would literally be saying, only these four houses don't have to comply with the zoning rules. So getting back to this common occurrence, the best that a homeowner could get in a such a circumstance like that is a legal non-conforming letter, which lets everyone know that the municipality will never, as long as the building stays the way it is, will never um, prosecute its non-conformance. It's legal. You can use it. You can have it. Um, <coughs> part of that process is that, however, if the building is destroyed or if it's knocked down, demolished for remodeling, that it would have to come in compliance with the rest of the zoning scheme for that area. And that's the problem with those four houses, is that the Midlothian cannot give to owners the privilege of deciding what is going to conform to their zoning because, you know, a bank is not comfortable with the legal non-conforming letter. We would literally be saying these four houses can be different than all the rest of them around there. But to the extent that everything that we can give you is to let the bank know that it is legal 
and non-conforming, that the village is not going to move against you or the other three owners as long as you own them or as long as it's not 51% repaired. Um, that that's fine, that that's fine. And again, that happens everywhere. Otherwise, there would never be an ability for a municipality to change zoning. Problems that are created from oversized houses on small lots, too many houses on small lots or small areas, congested neighborhoods, a municipality would never ever be able to change those and address those problems if the owners could simply say, well, my bank won't give me a loan or a buyer who wants to buy my property won't give me a loan. That is how municipalities fix zoning issues within, its, within their boundary. I can understand all that, except at the point where it was built that way, the wealthy and a lot of you built that way, my original financing was done that way, and at some point, the wealthy decided to change it without letting me know, and from what I understand again, nobody can prove that it was done properly, but now it's put me in a very precarious position, myself and the others. So that's the that's that's the that's the room I'm looking for to have somebody help with. I don't want nothing special. I just want what I have. And by doing what got done, you've effectively taken tens of thousands of dollars of value away from that property. Uh, that is the difficulty that I have. You're you're saying that, but I I I'm showing you on Karen's property. I don't two units in that area is worth about $240,000 or slightly less than now. She sold for one hundred seventy dollars because she had to sell it under the condition it was under. I'm a real estate agent. I've been doing this for yeah. over 30 years as a business. So it, it, and then, okay, here, fix my $9,000 tax bill. I live on Kenton. Bigger lot, bigger property, paying less than half of this, thankfully. But I'm paying this because it's a two unit, but it's not a two unit. So there's a lot of gray here, and all I want is help. And if all we help you tell me is, yeah, I'll give you a letter that says it's legal and conforming, great, I'll take that answer, and it'll give me my direction. Until now, I've never been given any of that information. I've never been given a letter, nobody's ever called me, I've been asking for months. There was a letter that was issued in which it was stated that it was legal and conforming. However, there was a sentence at the end which said if it was destroyed by 50%, that it would not be able to be rebuilt. It's my understanding that you requested that that language be removed. Who? Well, whoever the letter was sent to. One well, of, one really of not me. All right. I'm standing here saying I've never seen a letter, then, I've never got a call, I've then, never got an email from anybody here. Then we can address that. We'll address that. We'll fix that. And we'll address that. But just to let you know that the village did agree to remove that last sentence also. It doesn't satisfy me. Because I don't know anything about it. And I've been asking for months. Sure. Okay, I'm just going to speak momentarily. No, we're meeting good. Meeting minutes. We're good. Um, are, they, are they online where anyone can go ahead and at least look yeah. into the notion of whether or not the meeting did exist, that in which this conversation that you're proposing happened, and if I go to the website, correct, or is not zoning stuff online? I don't know the status anymore. I don't use it. Come on, village board meeting minutes? Uh, yes, and I'm talking yes, about like. back. This goes back to the issue I've been raising for over 11 years about the thickness or the thinness of the archives. And here's the moment that I'm listening to, and thank you for letting me in as well. But knowing that meeting minutes can at least in some manner address a portion of what I just heard. <laughs> yeah, How would we get those meeting minutes that it, at least we can go search for kind of thing also, please? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I'll be calling you. My turn. <laughs> okay, I'm, these are all really positive things. So you guys can all be happy. Um, Veterans Committee, awesome job on the parade. Good job. And that's well during the heat. It was good. Um, Beautification Committee had the garden walk. We had a lot of good people that came from all over. That was excellent. Um, our next big event is National Night Out. We need volunteers, big time. There's four people on that committee, and we really need help in more ways than one. Um, and, Alan, this is for you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks. Um, 
Thank you. That's it. George. Just a quick question. What post office do I go to for my mail application? Pose it. How do you pose it? Pose it. Sir? Thank you. A few quick questions first. On page 12 at the bottom, on the, the bills or whatever, the um, e waste recycling service, was that for our collection with the TVs and all that stuff? Well, that's sizable, and thank you to the village for doing that. It was something that needed to be done. That was a very large cost to the village. We kept it to one dumpster. Other towns opened it up to multiple dumpsters and cost them tens and tens of thousands of dollars. So um, it was a very sizable cost. I think it was worth it for the residents that used it. But I've been talking to uh, Bernie from Republic to try to do something about that existing bill or, or some future bill that we can help us out with. So, yeah, it was a sizable cost. I have a question about the counseling center or whatever it is on 147th street there um one of the k streets if, if the thing looks like it's kind of falling apart and the grass seems to be overgrown half the time it looks like the roof's damaged on it Kilborn? yeah i think it's around Kilborn. i know for a long time like the grass wasn't cut in that and it's it's kind of the one on the north side of the street yeah. Right? Yeah. On the north side of the street? Northwest. Yeah. Okay. Wait, yeah. there's two of them. There's one by the creek, then there's one that's a block or two west. Not by the dry cleaners. That's the one by, that's one by the creek. Building. The one by the creek? One. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's in horrible looking condition. But, and, and then I, I have another a little, a little story. <laughs> <laughs> that I think begging for something to be done about. Um, after the last board meeting, when you mentioned that 145th Street was going to be closed for the fireworks. Okay, the next morning I get up and go online, because I didn't quite hear the ending street. I heard from 145th and Holman to, but I figured that's neat. So the next morning I get up, village website, not a work. Village calendar doesn't even mention the fireworks. So it's like, okay. Wrong spot. Park District. Nope. Nothing, just the general blurb about, because you also said something about um, transportation. So it's like, okay. So then I wait until 9 o'clock when things will open. And I call, let's see, where did I start? I called the Park District. Oh, yes, they're going to have transportation from the Metro lot. Which Metro lot? No, the Metro station where the, the train goes. Okay, to, and where is it going to drop people up? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to call you back. I know this is like a personal issue. I have a handicapped friend that I bring every year for our fireworks, and walking is a real issue for her. So. I was like, okay, fine. So then I called the police department. The gal who answered the phone says, oh, I, I don't know about the street closings or anything. That would be the chief and he's on the phone right now. Maybe city hall, let me transfer you. Okay, I get one of the girls who are always very nice you know, who answers the phone at city hall. And I'm asking about where, 145th Street is going to be closed from home to where? Oh, let me see if I can find that out for you. No, she can't give me an answer. Let me transfer you to the police department. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you know? So then I come back, then I get that Chief Delaney, who very nicely tells me it's to Patsy and the park in the rain day lot. Which, after the fact, after the fireworks and stuff, I found out from the park district that that was supposed to be, like they were trying to keep that kind of like a handicap. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, the night of the fireworks. I go over early, 
park my car so I can get it right next to the sidewalk and stuff. My husband drops us off for the fireworks. Except for there's a string across the parking lot as you would pull in off of Kenzie. And it's sort of like the third car in line to turn. Two young boys in blue t-shirts come over, pick the string up, two cars go in, put the string back and walk away. Nothing for, afterwards I found out they said that was supposed to be the police department, that somebody was supposed to be there. There was no one official there to pick this string up, which we won't go into the fight that that went into when we go, let me out of this car! But the, this kind of chaos over stuff, I, I'm a firm advocate for doing things in your village. And this, was, the, this was hideous. All us running around just trying to find out where you can park, then it's not there, where the strip closing is exactly, and then I, I guess I'm not entitled to information because I'm not on Facebook, but I was told that some stuff was on Facebook too. And I mean, and it's not just something like this. I was looking for the Memorial Day. There's usually some kind of a service for the veterans, and they have, could not find that. It's not on the calendar at all for the village. Couldn't find anything on it. I called the VFW and had a woman who picked up the phone and told me she didn't know. This was less than a week before Memorial Weekend when, you know, the, this inability to get information for some things is really kind of I keep telling you, Don, I'll help you. Get a village calendar. We need a community calendar. We need something. Because you cannot get the information you're looking for. And by the way, whoever those four officers were, with all that nonsense that were, people should say thank you. Yeah. When you watch that, when you see these guys walk into this, you know, well done. Mm -hmm. It's all. <laughs> okay. we, we realize the communication issues. That, that is, I mean, obviously, you know that's a Park District event. Uh, but the uh, police department did put out a statement. I Maybe it was just on Facebook. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was code red as well. It was code red. And then, um, uh, so, and we are working. We are going to keep working towards that. Okay. All right, anyone else? All right, I'll close the floor of public comment and move on to tonight's consent agenda. On tonight's consent agenda, number one, approval for firefighter Ramirez to enroll in the Southern Illinois University bachelor's program to achieve the public safety management bachelor's degree and being reimbursed for the summer class in the amount of $945. Number two, approval of the 2018 Illinois Fire and Police Commissioners Association membership, renewal not to exceed $375. Number three, approval of the purchase HP Business De uh, Desktop Pro Desk 400G4 computers for the Police Department Detective Division, not to exceed $847.96. Number four, approval for the village to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District regarding the Keystone Avenue permeable parking lot project. Number five, approval to extend offer to part-time firefighter paramedic candidates. And number six, approval of a list of bills. Is there any item, any trustee would like off of the consent agenda tonight? I would like to remove number four. Number four. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, then I will be looking for a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda without number four, approval for the village to enter into the new government agreement with the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. Looking for a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Kenny? Aye. Trustee Crowley? Aye. Trustee Gillis? Aye. Trustee Ivan? Aye. Trustee Killey? Aye. Trustee Kreis? Aye. Motion carries. Excellent. Moving on to trustee business, trustee Price. Um, the first item I will address why I ask to have item number four removed. Um, the board did not receive the final uh, draft of that item today until after 4 o'clock um, in an attempt to uh, comply with our 
our requirement that the board have all documents 48 hours in advance of a meeting. I did send the intergovernmental agreement to the attorney on June 27th, asking him uh, to advise me of any issues as soon as possible. Um, and I didn't hear back. I reached out again on June 6th, um, asking for a status. And unfortunately, um, there was some communication back and forth. But to be respectful of the board, um, everybody did not get this final document today until I think it was after 4 o'clock. Um, so I would like this on the agenda next week for approval. Additionally, I sent uh, another email out that I my recall was when we passed the uh, intergovernmental agreement for Natalie Creek that the district MWRD always requires an ordinance. So therefore, we need to have an ordinance as well, and I would like that ordinance on the agenda. And the attorney could put the draft watermark on the document as well because it is still a draft. We have to send it back to MWRD with the draft watermark. So I like those two items next week. Um, again, I really want to comply with the 48 hours. It's only fair that the board members have 48 hours to review these documents. Unfortunately, I got it so late I couldn't even review it this afternoon. Um, What I have on the agenda as far as Keep America Beautiful, Keep Midlothian Beautiful update. Um, everybody knows that this was Jackie Hill's project, passion, and a lot of work had to go into picking up and completing the affiliate packet to submit to Keep America Beautiful. And on Friday, after an enormous amount of work and backtracking, I sent the packet to Stanford, Connecticut. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back from them. I have reached out to Sue Smith, who was our trainer in November. Um, she is in Connecticut for a conference. She advised me that her and Grace Keegan, who will be our regional director, were hoping to review the document either today or tomorrow, give me some feedback as to whether it is acceptable or what parts need to be um, amended or revised, but they do realize that uh, there was a lot of work to get the affiliate packet uh, submitted because Jackie had did all of the work. So a lot of things had to, had to be uh, researched in order to create the affiliate packet. Uh, we do have a Keep America Beautiful meeting scheduled next Thursday at noon, and at this point, I think it would be a, a fair assessment that the meeting will not take place. There would not be a whole lot to discuss until we get to our affiliate status. And once we, once they t tell us our paperwork is acceptable, then we will have our affiliate training. A number of you, the two chiefs here, are on that committee. I think uh, Superintendent Sperry, you're on that committee too, correct? So, um, and I know Rita is on that committee. Um, so at this point, it looks like we probably will not have a meeting next week. I'm trying to be respectful of everybody's time because once we get to affiliate status, we're all going to have a tremendous amount of work to do. Uh, so that is the update I have on that. And again, I want to um, thank you, Jean, for talking about the parade. I want to thank the Veterans Committee. George is here. Um, I don't know how we pulled it off because we lost one of our driving forces, Sharon Doden, it was very difficult this year. And it was probably the uh, hottest day we ever had for a parade. I had people contacting me that entire week, are you still going to have the parade? So I want to thank everybody who participated, but I especially want to thank the Veterans Committee because uh, it's a very small committee, but somehow, somehow we pulled it off in that incredible heat. So thank you. And the last question I have, um, I guess I would ask for either Trustee Ivan or um, the Treasurer. Do we have an update on the audit? We do have an update. It was, um, it's in review, and when I called yesterday, they said we should have our bound copy, hopefully in a couple of days, and that means that they would also send us the Trying PDF file. Okay. And so when I get that, you want me to send that directly to you? So I can send it directly to Washington, D.C., so we can get that $150,000 for that grant. Okay, thank you. 
And I believe that is all I have this evening. Thank you, ma'am. I concur. The Veterans Committee did a fantastic job. Um, it was a it was a hot day, but it was, was a good. Uh, it was a very nice parade. Very uh, very nice. Uh, a lot of floats and a lot of uh, groups. So it was very nice. So thank you. And uh, your executive director of Keep America Beautiful does have uh, extra copies of the manual if anyone on the committee needs it or would like to see it. And uh, she's been uh, reading through the manual and trying to <laughs> absorb all the intricacies of the, of the program. So, uh, but thank you. All right, Trustee uh, Ida. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I want to also thank the uh, Veterans Committee and uh, for the parade as well. And uh, Beautification Committee had actually their first truck float <laughs> in the parade as well. And we did have that at the garden walk, which went really well. Um, as Jean mentioned, we had uh, 51 citizens actually attended the walk, and we brought in about roughly about $600. So it was a pretty good deal and a lot of lovely homes. Who, who won the wagon? Leonard. Uh, Janine. Janine, Janine, Janine Leonard. Leonard. Janine Leonard. Yeah. There you go. Not me. Or me. So. <laughs> who made the wagon? <laughs> Scott. Scott Schultz. Really cool with copper there. wheels so it was, it was a lovely yeah good looking wagon all right so I wanted to uh, talk about the position of the uh, part-time clerk um, what I want to do is uh, update the job description for the uh, part-time clerk with a salary range starting at uh, $12 to $16 and then um, depending on experience um, would be the like the dollar amount that we would pull out of the range on, on who we would hire for the part-time clerk position so um, I figured that uh, this may impact some of the employees within the department, but this change will go, the, the change that impacts the other employees that are making less than this, this change would go through our regular um, review process, you know, employee review process that we're, which is coming up the, in the next month. So, um, no, 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 wait. So the review is a set amount, but you know, your the set amount. It can be a set amount for percentage, but if we want to do an adjustment or something like that, that could go okay. also to so the review process. So in other words, we can do adjustment because my view, we have to adjust everybody one way, one way or the other. Well, I mean, you have to make this equitable if you're going to raise the part-time. Well, in a typical work environment, once you bring somebody on at a higher wage, you don't increase the wages for the whole staff. That would be kind of, you know, a bad precedent. Why? <laughs> because you just don't do that. If you have a guy that's been there for 30 years, you're going to give him the $2 difference that you're going to start with a new guy? Well, is this, 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 uh, my question would be, is this job description different than what the current people in, is it the same job description same as job other people doing right? it? Or is it different job description? It is the part-time clerk for the administration staff. It is a unique job description. So it's but, different than all the other clerks? It, yes, it's unique. Well, but is it unique because they do more, or is it unique because it's part-time? What makes it so unique? We don't make judgments based on uh, wh who does more or less. It's based on the job description. So whether or not it's, they do more work or less work isn't part of the process. It is, this is the job, this is what you do, this is what we want to pay you, and this is what we want to pay you to attract you to this position. Okay, my first of all, Explain again. You want to change the job description so to the salary have a, range. Yes, to is have a range be between twelve dollars and sixteen dollars an hour. Based on experience. Based on experience. Okay. Um, the the former part time person that was here a week, a week or two, and left. What was that person hired at? Ten fifty. Okay. So you want to raise it from ten fifty to twelve dollars and make it a range of twelve to sixteen dollars. Okay. Depending on experience. My understanding was that. Okay, depending on experience. My understanding was that the request was being made to raise the, the salary because we were, the village was having difficulty attracting. That's why we're, we're doing the range to attract based on experience. Mm -hmm. So the person with the least amount of experience would get the $12 one and mm -hmm. the one that's super great would get the $16 range. Will they be doing the same work as the current clerks? but only as a part-time basis? No, it's based on the job description. It doesn't, each clerk position, which there are three of, is unique to that position. 
So as, since it's a graded uh, level, it's more work is assigned or more um, jobs are assigned to the higher level person. So there's uh, three levels within the, within the clerks. I, I just, I have to make a comment here. I think this needs a little bit more work as it relates to existing employees because we have some current employees who are really good employees and are probably not being paid equitably. And we could be starting this person out at a higher amount than some of our current clerks. Well, that's an assumption you're making. We, we, ha we ha don't have a particular person in mind. We have not made an offer. So if we say $12, well, that would be an incorrect statement. If we said $16, that would be a correct statement. But still, you're setting the range. Yes, right. so, so that we can make an offer. And what do we do when we make an offer to an employee? We bring it before the board, and the board gets to decide whether or not that's appropriate or not. I want to increase the range so we can bring some people in and do some interviewing and say, hey, we want to offer you this amount as long as the board approves it. That's not equitable. It's just not it, equitable. It is equitable the within the administration department. It's perfect. Pardon me? It's at, at, it's, it is equitable within the administration department. This should be referred to finance. I, I, I would agree, only because I think here if we start a part-time person at, at a higher range or a higher hourly rate than a current village employee who's been here, who has served, who has good reviews, I think um, I think that's terrible for morale. And I, I, I think they should get a raise too. But when we raised up the other part-time employees to $20 an hour, did we do the same and make it equitable across all part-time employees? No, we did not. Every part-time employee in that one department got that raise. And that is what I want to do within my department, is set up a range and make sure that we go through the process, making sure that everybody is looked at within my department. I can't go and look at every other department and make that decision. That is up to the department heads to make those decisions for their employees. Or are we taking that away from them? Should go to finance. It needs a lot more discussion. Well, I, I mean, we you know, we're, making a, we're making a decision that can really affect the morale of not just your department, but every department. Well, that would be up to the department head again to address that issue. I mean, all we have to do is tell the department heads, look at your... So, can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Yes. Are you asking this just so you can put out the job description? I want to be able to make an offer to a, a person to bring them in because we are short staffed by two people now. All right? And the only way to do that is to have a, a range of dollars that we can offer them to bring them in based on their experience. It's simple economics. It's, it's how most jobs are done. So I'm, I'm surprised that, uh, that that's even an issue. No, no, what I'm asking for is this is just for the job description so that we can advertise what our range is no. at this point. This is to bring the people in and interview them and offer them a job if we need to, whatever rate we're going to pick, which then goes before the board for your review again. So this is a, a multi-step process. I, I don't understand what the problem is of me changing the range. From we, should, we should look at the range before we offer it. And we Not should afterwards. Why would we do okay. it afterwards when you when The process you're... is that we interview the people. Yeah. We have a dollar amount. They may ask what the dollar amount is. Correct? Mm -hmm. So we want to tell them we're thinking about this dollar amount for you. Then we bring it to the board and we say to the board, I want this job this person at this rate. So this the is board gets to decide at that point in time whether or not we hire them. So, so, so maybe I asked my question wrong. Okay. So let me re-ask it. So you're asking for permission to put on the, the, uh, the posting that this would be the range of the salary. You will then get applicants, get people to apply, and then if there's somebody who you feel meets this criteria, that criteria, whatever, based on their experience, you'll bring it to us and say, all right, I think this person deserves thirteen fifty an hour and not to start out at 12 because they had five years' experience. Right. Okay. <coughs> so you're just asking for it to be on the posting, not necessarily. And when we talk to the person. Right, I understand that. We've got to get an acceptance from them before but, we but, bring it to the board. But we will, but 
but you'll bring it to the board to say this is the offer we're asking to Yeah, but and the board will make the decision. Why, if, why would we offer somebody $16 an hour for part-time? I mean, and what, especially, that, especially when some of the people in your administration that are full-time aren't making that. That's it. You're going to, you have no idea what this can do. The first time that anybody looks at that, that job posting, and it's rightly so. They, you know, if I was an employee and I was a five-year employee and I was, or a two-year employee, whatever it is, and I look at a part-time posting that possibly they could make more money than I am. Oh, no. We, set, we should set the range before this happens, because otherwise we're going to have trouble and we're doing this terribly. It, they're so disrespectful to the people who are working here. How can we, do, how can we possibly do that? That's, that's so disrespectful. If you no, had, I'm, if I'm you have were, to if you were at a job for for thirty thousand dollars, and the person comes in and says, "Well, this person's forty thousand dollars doing the same job as you are, and they're new," but we, you know, and we're not going to make an adjustment for you. Well, no, it, that doesn't usually happen in, in the work. Oh. Why did the work. person leave after a week? Because they weren't making enough money. They weren't making it yet. But they took yeah. the job knowing it was tempted. And then a better job probably came along where she could make more money, so she left. Right, sure. So have we advertised it as a twelve dollar an hour part time job yet? No, not until the we Start, get the approval. Starting at twelve dollars. Hmm? Starting at twelve dollars. We should the finance committee really should look at everybody's everybody's salary and see what's going on. Right now I don't know who makes what, but you know, if you're telling me that well, we can a, the report. a new part timer who's had some experience is worth more than some of the people we have then no. Mayor, can we vote on this? Yeah. All right. Up can I, I want to ask, I want to make a motion to uh, update it, the job description, to the uh, add the range of $12 and $16 for the part-time clerk salary, level one. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any more discussion? Roll call. Trustee Iman. Aye. Trustee Crowley. Aye. Trustee Caveney? No. Trustee Gillis? No. Trustee Killey? No. Trustee Christ? Nay. Motion fails. All right, then. Back to the drawing board. Hmm? Back to the drawing board. Um, what, what would be the next procedure that, it, that we should do? We're already short two people. Uh, I can't hire nobody, make an offer to anybody. How do you expect me to fill that position? When's the finance committee? Why don't we just advertise that at twelve dollars an hour? If we advertised at ten fifty an hour last time and we got some movement, I would think that we would get some applicants at twelve dollars an hour. Do we the the two part time the two positions that are vacant right now are they both part time positions or is one full time one part time? One's full time and one's part time, although that might be fluid. Yes, we made the remote modification to the full-time position to be a shared <coughs> shared position as well. What do you mean by shared position? It, it would be a full-time position, but... They two people could re be the re replacement for one. Oh, you would hire two part-time employees to do the same job. So it would be job sharing? Yes. Like, okay. Okay. I'm not... I don't disagree with the, with the range concept. I just don't... I just think that $16 is a little on the high end. So well, okay, that's, 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 I understand that $16, if I would have said 14 I would have probably gotten a pass. Is, is that what we're telling me? So, I mean, I went with the I apologize. I, so. maybe, maybe I should have brought that up in the conversation before we went to the vote, and it could have changed. I didn't. Could, could we re-vote on it if I change it to 14 <laughs> well, I. That was the whole point, that you guys get to approve it before. We hire that person. So right. then you could have said it. That we're, we're done. This vote's over with. All right. Thank you very much. Back I'm, to drawing board. I'm done. Trustee Gillis. So there's no advice. My, my mistake, Trustee Ivan. Trustee Gillis. Um, yes. Thank you, Mayor. I just have a couple of quick comments. Uh, I don't have anything to report on the fire department other than uh, the email you got from Chief Hot Wagner regarding uh, the Clemson family, uh, firefighter paramedic Dan, DJ Clemson, as an a addition to his family, uh, this morning at 322, they had a baby, so I would like to 
uh, congratulate them on that. Um, 7-Eleven, the baby wasn't seven pounds, 11 ounces, so it was only seven pounds, six ounces. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and hopefully I'm not out of line when I bring this up, but I'd like to express the condolences to the D'Ambrosio family. Um, those of you who knew Judy D'Ambrosio, she grew up in Midlothian on Terrace Lane. Um, she worked at Bremen, graduated from Bremen, graduated from St. Chris. Um, she passed away yesterday and she will be sorely missed, and that's all I have. Okay, so our condolences. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I would like to state that the wake is um, the 19th at Hickey's from 2 to 8, and there's a mass at St. Chris at 11 o'clock on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. The 19th? Yes. Trustee Cavney? Thank you, Mayor. Um, the first thing I wanted to discuss was the recruitment of the building superintendent. However, I don't, in the packet, it does not include, I thought that there was a document that I had emailed to everybody with regards to that, and I thought I had requested that it be included in the packet, and I don't I, see it in I here. think you asked for it to be on the agenda, and since you already sent it to the board, we didn't resend it. I have um, it. The board already has it. I printed it's them okay. and brought them with. I have them in front of me. Okay. I couldn't find it before, so. Okay. I thought I was looking for it in the packet to discuss it, and it's not here. <laughs> so, do you I want my copies? Yes, please. Because I know which one I prefer. I'll find it for you. <laughs> okay. I sent an email to everybody to let you know that we were having difficulty getting resumes in for um, to fill the position of building superintendent. Um, we put the posting out on the website. I had shared with all of you that I had posted it on, I believe, five different association websites. And to the best of my knowledge, you haven't received anything, Maria? I have not either. So I feel the next step is we, we should probably go to um, a recruiting company to help us recruit for this position. So I reached out to GovHR. I had sent all of you um, an email with that information and they had uh, two different options that we could consider. The first option would be um, a recruiting service that would be $6,500. Um, and what that service includes is review position job description, meet with the designated village representatives via phone to understand the requirements for the position and to collaborate to clarify qualifications, skills, experience, and additional attributes, prepare a two-page position announcement for the village to review, post the position on GovHR's website and social media sources and other approved advertising sources, distribute position announcements to relevant professional network contacts via email and telephone, Prepare a draft matrix for client review and approval that identifies the key position requirements with which to evaluate the candidates. Review each candidate's qualifications against position requirements and present candidate matrix. Schedule selected candidates for interviews. Prepare and present draft interview questions. Conduct reference checks for finalist candidate. That would be for $6,500. Variable cost on that would be advertising expense that would range from 500 to 1500 depending on the type and source used. The other option would be the cost of $2,500, and that also has a variable cost for advertising that would be 600 to 1700 um, This service would be slightly different than the original recruiting service I just mentioned. Um, for the $2,500 service, we would they would review the position job description and any prior position announcements, prepare a two-page position announcement for client review and approval. They would post the position to client-approved advertising sources, to GovHR's website, to their um, Twitter feed twice a week, to their Facebook twice a week, post to GovHR's and senior staff's link, LinkedIn pages where they have 10,000 contacts email blast to 3,500 subscribed job seekers, 
email outreach to GovHR's database of former building official applicants for GovHR recruitments for the last two years, recruiting software which has access to over 5,000 local government active job seekers nationwide, distribution of position announcements to relevant professional network contacts via direct email or telephone, then they would submit all the candidates to the village via Dropbox or other method uh, within five days and then the village would take it from there. They would not do. They would not be preparing any um, questions or helping interview any of the candidates or anything like that. They would just solicit and recruit candidates, provide the information to the village, and then the village would sort through it all. So, I wanted to discuss that with the board and find out what your feeling is on us hiring somebody to help us recruit for this position. Two years ago, my understanding was when the when the board was recruiting for that position. You posted it on the village website, and I'm not sure what other sources um, it was posted. I don't know if it was posted in the Tribune as well. Um, and my understanding was that you received like 10 to 12 applications. Eight applications. Eight, okay. Yes, we interviewed six, and it was on the, in the Tribune. Mm -hmm. um, and we did it on different sources, um, association sources. Right. And we did get some very qualified individuals that were assistant superintendents at the set time. Mm -hmm. But at the time, we weren't in a position to pay them mm -hmm. what they were probably worth. Mm -hmm. Because some of them were making a very high salary, higher than we what we um, offered Mr. DeSimone at the time. Mm -hmm. so hopefully, this will work because um, our first with the company that we were talking about, that price range was ridiculous. Right. So what do you recommend? Um, well, I just wanted to, you know, share these numbers with the board and get your idea. I mean, there's quite a big price difference. Um, I would be happy with the $2,500 service because it sounds like they would... Um, do the leg work. They, they are doing all the lead work and then you know in both in both scenarios they're going to do the lead work in the more expensive scenario they would be have more involvement in the scheduling of the interview process they would help with interview questions and that type of thing and I think that the, we could probably the village could probably handle that part of the process on its own and, and that would and be that, that as I read this trustee Nate, that was going to be my recommendation because I think we know what we need. You mm -hmm. you know what we need in the building mm -hmm. department, and um, I think the lower cost option would probably give us the best bang for our buck. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I, can I just yes. ask how since you you talked about the salary range, how did we determine the salary range? Um, the salary range was determined by looking at various other um, municipalities and what they pay their building official. Mm -hmm. And building officials, the salary range for building officials is anywhere from $85,000 to $100,000. Okay. You know, ba based on their qualifications. That's why in the job posting, I did not state what the range was. Um, we put in their salary, DOQ, mm -hmm. depending on qualifications. Mm -hmm. So, so do you think it would help to put the salary range in there? I don't know. I know we're serious at least. And, and I guess, you know, I, I guess when, the, when we do the salary range, I always like to know what towns we sort of pick, but. I don't know off the top of my head, but I can go back in my file and I can. I mean, it was know, an average town. Went. Yeah, it, they were towns all here on the south, in the south, east and southwest side. I wasn't looking at North Shore. I was looking okay. at, you know, our neighbors. But not Tinley Park or Orland or the... No. Or the... I was looking at Oak Forest. I, maybe I did look at Tinley Park, um, but it was Oak Forest, um, Posen, Country Club Hills, Hazelcrest, okay. all okay, great. out in this neighborhood. Great. But I, I think it would be helpful to put the salary range in there. I think we'd get more that way with honey. Uh, I, I would I actually disagree. I think we would better depending on qualifications. Mm -hmm. We might get more applications. 
And then we pay, we, we pay based on their qualifications. Well, these companies seem like they're going to review our job description, so they'll probably yes. tell us what And the, I'll ask them what they think the best approach is, what the, is, approach is. What the okay. salary range is. Okay. Great. So. Great. Okay. Motion. So I'd like to make the motion that the village engage GovHRUSA to assist the village in um, outreach services for the position of building superintendent for the village of Midlothian, and we choose their service um, recruitment service of twenty five hundred dollars. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Trustee Kaveny. Aye. Trustee Ivan. Aye. Trustee Crowley. Aye. Trustee Gillis. Aye. Trustee Kelly. Aye. Trustee Price. Aye. Motion carries. Can we interview the one that did the fine? Yes. And I'm going to bring that up with them. Oh. Yes, we will. Okay. Next item on my agenda, which this document is in your packet, it's to um, <laughs> hire Don Morris Architects. Um, consequently, after I had put this on, asked Maria to put this on the agenda and had gotten this document, I had talked to um, Chief Hot Wagner about a, a bunch of other things, and he had told me that he actually used Don Morris to review the fire life safety plans and the, I think the sprinkler plans and the, what other plan? The, um, yeah, but he used them for Ricky Rockets as well. So, and and he thought that there was, that the village had already approved this vendor when the village approved this vendor to do the storage facility. So I don't even know if I needed to put this on the agenda and ask for approval. It's my knowledge that over the last year, the previous superintendent has used them for a couple of things as recently as probably six, eight months ago. Okay. I have no idea because he would not have shared any of that information with me. I don't know if he used Don Morris to review any plans. My understanding from the building clerk was that the former superintendent did all the plan review for Ricky Rockets on his own, um, but it was the chief that used Don Morris for the the fire plans and the and that type of thing. No, so, I'm sure if we go back yeah. into bills, I'm sure we could we find it. Look for it. Yeah. And, and the protocol has always been if we needed to bring in a Don Morris, that mm -hmm. cost was then passed on. Right, it will be passed on. It'll be passed on take to... Take it out of their bond, probably. Right, take mm -hmm. it out of their bond, or mm -hmm. it'll be passed on to, mm -hmm. to so the you, entity. You're just letting us know that Don Morris will be reviewing the plans for the Park District renovation yes. and expansion? Okay. Yes, Thank and we are, we, are, we are having a pre-plan review meeting next Wednesday here in this room at 3.15. And I asked for all hands on deck. So our police, fire, and cookies. public works, pardon me? No. I might bring cookies, but I'm not going to guarantee you that I'm going to bake them. <laughs> so I love our two little cookie bakeries in town. They're fabulous. So can I ask why we are hiring them? We, the village is going to hire them on the village's behalf to do the plan review mm -hmm. because we don't have a building superintendent. But even if we did have a building superintendent, mm -hmm. I still would. Um, insist that we hire Don Morris Architects to review the plans because this is a big building. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a big brand new building. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. We want to make sure that all the fire life safety requirements are met. We want to make sure that all the ADA requirements are met. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be adding that big splash pad in the back, mm -hmm. so they've got a lot of, they want to, they're going to be adding some parking. They have a lot of sewer work that needs to mm -hmm. be done. Mm -hmm. So um, Joe and Tom are also going to be at the meeting. Mm -hmm. They're going to be, you know, talking about whatever they need to do sewer-wise and following um, MWRD's watershed management ordinance. So the purpose of next week's meeting, there will be no, probably no plans to look at. They might bring a site plan to show us where the, the footprint of the building is going to be and, and conceptually what's going to happen over there. We won't have any final um, construction drawings to look at to review, but I thought this is such a big project. I thought it would be in everyone's best interest to um, have everybody at the table so everybody can ask, you know, whatever questions they need to be asked. And so that the park district's folks can ask the village's employees what they need to provide to us. Okay. To make sure that they comply with our ordinances, basically, is what you're saying. Right. Okay. All right. Got it. Yeah. So that's okay. the purpose of the pre-plan meeting. Okay. Um, Dominic, the 
uh, from the Park District also had mentioned that they are going to be asking the village to vacate 145th Street. I'm not quite sure what that means. I have a feeling that I think I know what it means, but I'm not sure. They want to move or extend their parking lot to accommodate the new building and splash pad, so it would. So that little would piece of 145th Street. But the problem is, I drove past there yesterday. There's that little house on the corner. There's that little house on the corner mm -hmm. that's on Costner mm -hmm. that faces east. Yes. But their garage faces 145th Street. So how's that guy going to be able to use this garage if we give up that little piece it, of it 145th? It won't be that part. And even if it was, we'd have to. Uh, we'd have to so what part of a, are a, they talking about? The grassy part of 145th, not the yes, big part. Yes, close I to mean, the park. Okay, and that's fine. Because so they've the, already encroached into that grassy area in the main parking lot. They're talking okay. about the, the west park. Okay, lot. so. But we'll, let's we just wanted pass to. It on Wednesday. Right, that and that was the reason why I wanted to have this meeting so that we can have discussion about that particular matter, because there's a big ditch that runs through there. They won't. Take over the ditch. So, anyhow, um, what else? And that's all I have. Thank you. Trustee Kelly. Okay, um, thank you. So, uh, talked to uh, Superintendent Sperry a few weeks ago, talked uh, about the street condition. Uh, he said he had picked out um, streets that are going to be done for for this year and he also said there was a whole batch of streets that were very close in poor condition to the ones that we're fixing um, and uh, we you know have a little extra that we could uh, release from the bond fund to other funds as we're lucky right now and so I floated the idea of adding five hundred thousand dollars in street repairs Apparently not to MFT, that was wrong, and engineering they go because then I have to, we'd have to go through Illinois, but to the street uh, street uh, account. And uh, again, we have to uh, comply with the low bidding requirements on that. And um, we were hopeful that we could piggy bank on the uh, state's uh, bid for the uh, CDBG, but that hasn't even happened yet. And second of all, uh, attorney, uh, our attorney has suggested that that's not uh, quite uh, kosher, and we should do uh, a separate, if we wanted to, we would do a separate uh, bid for the uh, street project if we wanted to add on $500,000 to the street projects. Now, knowing, uh, just for your information, that if we do $500,000, it's going to actually, uh, it's about $50,000 a block, so we're going to be ending up doing somewhere between 10 and 13 blocks. But uh, knowing that uh, we would have to go out to bed again, we don't have time to do that. We basically uh, can't go into the cold months because uh, it might not show up now, but it will show up in a year or two that the streets will deteriorate quicker because of the colds. If we get an early cold spell, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think I learned, learned from you and Engineer Nagel fairly well. Um, but basically, uh, we still have that problem. So. Um, we can't basically we can't do any extra street work this year because of the you know the bidding requirements by by law. Um, but I would ask uh, that uh, if we had known, for example, we had the five hundred thousand dollars earlier in the year, we would have put this into a street program. So I would ask that uh, if I'm not saying this wrong, uh, Treasurer Britton, that we put. Um, the five hundred thousand dollars from the bond fund into the street account and that uh, they would have $500,000 uh, extra for next year for the streets and they wouldn't have to think about what's in the, what's in the budget for the next year. They could go ahead and get the bidding done and it would, and it would uh, be ready to roll for next year. We're probably not going to get any more CBDG awards that we got this year. It's a miracle and it's a testament to that they like us. We do a good job for them. We comply with their regulations and they're very happy with us. And also, we're doing green infrastructure, but next year that probably won't be the account. And uh, if we have to wait again for the budget to find out what's going to be in the street account for the budget, we might again be too late. So, you know, we'd like to get the bids out in early in the year, February, March, or something like that, so we're ready to roll and uh, and see what's going on. So, if that is that something, did I say anything 
was that okay that if we transferred five hundred thousand dollars from the bond twenty eight, I believe it is, is that right? To the it's street account? The what I would suggest is we can, I would suggest we put it in the capital budget this year. We put it in the, not the capital budget, the capital improvement plan, the five-year capital improvement plan. We put it in there. I, I really don't want to transfer money. I want to earmark the money, mm -hmm. but I don't want to transfer it because we're supposed to keep those nice, clean mm -hmm. lines. So let's put it in the capital improvement plan for next year knowing that we're going to have to fund that. And that we just know that we, if we have any other projects come up, we can't, we can use any extra money except for that $500,000 that we're here next. Okay, but does, does Superintendent Sperry have to wait for the budget to be approved before he can go out to bid? That's my question. Okay, all right, so you can, de you can decide that this is okay before the budget's approved and we're okay. All right, I just, you know, it's just, the street condition, you know, last year we did a million dollars worth of streets, which was a little high for the usual, but, you know, we've always had $500,000 CBDG, and now this year was 250000 Normally we've gotten two hundred, but it's been kind of an Okay. Year. In addition, we got 240 but okay. that's earmarked. Okay, but we won't have any anymore, so we have to keep up our streets. The residents deserve that, and especially since the condition of the streets we're not doing is pretty close to the bad ones, we better pay attention to what's going on. And I, I, I think, I like what you just said, Treasurer, because I think we should put our uh, capital assets, not just equipment, into that budget also, so that we make sure we keep on top of maintaining our capital assets also. That also should probably include like sewer work. Yes, yes, and, exactly. Uh, like uh, the alleys was another thing that was brought up, brought to my attention as well. Things like of major projects that we right. might want to try to implement in the future, right? Or sure. At least in the next five years, right? Exactly. Yes, I understand that streets outweigh alleys, but I would like the alleys to be looked at as well, so not let them continue to deteriorate. One one particular alley. Um, well, you know the situation there is. Uh, Garages are too low. Yeah. Of them. And so you can resurface them all you want. You can do a lot more work than that. You know? Yeah, there's also a lot of standing water because of the ruts and. Yeah. Uh, that, that happens in alleys. That's why a lot of towns won't let you pave an alley if they want it all rock. Well, because of the existing garages being lower. Grind them up and so, make them asphalt. Are we not making them? What's that? Grind them up and make them uh, gravel. We're looking to that, yeah. Yeah, but how do you plow that then? You don't. don't you do. don't. <laughs> yeah, but well, we're going to have this alley. It's a no-win alley. Yeah. You know, I mean, as, as long as we are talking about public works and streets and so forth and whatever, were you, were you able to get that letter over to um, State Rep. Davis? That email? Yeah, I, they were out here. And, uh, oh, good. Kind of, I guess I got to call the guy back. I, I got a hold of the guy. They were out here doing some work, so I want to make sure they're doing what they should be doing. And they were, and they were just gonna. What were this. they doing? They were just gonna clean a couple of basins on the one side of the street and call it a day. And I said no. I said the lines are, you know, and I, so I reset the. I called their boss and they said, call our boss. We can only do what we can do. So I called the guy over at Harvey from this portion of 147th or maintenance garages. He told me they don't have any equipment, so I mean, got to get equipment. It's just, he says, most towns just supply the equipment. My guys will do the work. I said, well, we don't have a back to truck like they want. <clears throat> so he promised me that they were going to finish up that day doing something, they, they were going to be out the next day. He said he was going to be out here that afternoon. And he said he was from here, and we got a little small talk, and I was trying to make a connection with the guy. Um, long story short, he never would have left in the, in the morning, never came back the next day. So I got to call him to find out what actually he was planning on doing. They found out that the one sewer down where we get most of the standing water by Missouri in that area, uh, that one of the sewers just collapsed under the road. You know? it's just, and that's it's, their it's sewer. To, it's their sewer to maintain, not oh, yes. ours, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. But, so. But I got has no money. You know, we live in the state well, of Illinois. that's contributing to some of our flood issues here because okay. their sewer is collapsed. Right. And if you could ask them to please tell their crew not to spit their cigarette butts into the residence's yard. Yards? <laughs> I got I a phone call that. about that. Yeah. Great. Back to that. Sorry. Great. Okay.
Okay, great. Um, sidewalk program. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that Superintendent Sperry took the bull by the horns. And in the budget, you will see $50,000 for a sidewalk program because there are certain sidewalks that are just absolutely terrible, impassable, dangerous. And, you know, I don't know traditionally if we've gone and fixed sidewalks a lot, but, you know, if you, on these ones, you just have to. You don't want anybody getting hurt. And these are the worst of the worst of the worst. But at some point, and I applaud you for that, because normally I think it's been minimal that we've done on sidewalks. But 50000 I think that was a great idea. Um, but I think the board has to look at that, too, and your capital assets. Are we going to start doing something with sidewalks? Because on the east side of town, it's a fact. The sidewalks are deteriorating. They're getting uh, dangerous, a lot of them. You're not fixing just the, you know, the ones that are cracking. You're fixing the ones that are just absolutely dangerous and t terrible. So, I mean, we have to start thinking about what's the, what's the board policy is going to be on that. Uh, years ago, we tried to do the 50-50. And according to you, Superintendent Sperry, what happened was that the money uh, wasn't used as we thought it should be because a lot of the people don't have money to contribute to the 50-50 to yeah, fix the their sidewalk. The worst sidewalks weren't getting addressed. Right. It was the people that had money that wanted a discolored sidewalk. Because, right. You know, and so we were using a bomber. So that didn't, that didn't work as intended, but, you know, I can tell you you're absolutely right that a lot of the sidewalks on the east side of town, the older sidewalks, are bad. So we have to think about that. Put, I don't know if we want to put that on the capital improvement radar. Uh, it's sort of breaking new ground here because in the past we've said the homeowner is responsibility is to take care of their sidewalk. You know, that sidewalk a lot of times was put in by their developer, developer when the home was built. You know, well, it's in the village. The village didn't put in this, most of these sidewalks. They very few. And so we, our traditional stance has been, well, it's the homeowners. But we have to find a way around that, so put your thinking caps on and see. But who technically owns the sidewalk, though? Does the homeowner own it's it or is it right village right property? It's a village right away, but same thing with the parkway. You gotta cut your grass, you gotta maintain your grass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Joe, can I ask a question? On the sidewalks that, that you're talking about, one of the things that I've noticed, and I know the safety committee has talked about this a number of times, is that a lot of these sidewalks um, that are buckling up and are really coming apart are because there's large trees in the parkway. And those roots are coming up through the sidewalks and literally taking them taking out of the their sidewalk out. Yeah. So, are we going to be removing trees to? Uh, how how does that work? If we're going to be replacing uh, the sidewalks, we obviously. Not, we try not to remove trees. I mean, we right. Right. Right now, I'm just I was looking for that money just to take care of the emergency repairs and, and replacements. You know, if somebody's falling down and over there, and it's you know. I got an eight inch rise in the, to the next sidewalk. I mean, we're talking complaints and, and things that right. we, you know, come in. We're not going to be able to replace all the sidewalks that need to be replaced. Right. I mean, we're never going to have that kind of money, you know. Right. But we could peck away at a little bit here and there and get the big ones. So what's the what's the answer to the where there's tree roots coming through? How do you how do you fix it? Big trees. I mean, that's why we have a tree ordinance now. I mean, you know, right. Certain species of trees can only be planted so that that doesn't happen again. You know. I mean, to be honest with you, just now this grant that we got now across from Cousins, there's a gap in the sidewalk and the apartment's going east. Mm -hmm. There was a big sycamore tree there. We talked about this a while back. And the homeowner at one time said, we cut the tree down, he'll put the sidewalk in. I said, well, I want you to sign something saying you're going to put that sidewalk in because we're not going to cut down the tree. He did. So now we got this grant and IDOT wouldn't cut the tree down. They wanted to put the sidewalk around it, which it would probably be pushed up by the roots. In a year. So we cut it down. And so now we're going to get the sidewalk done for free, you know. So. But yeah, a lot of trees that are planted in town aren't residential trees. You know, you get these silver right. maples, and they're supposed to be out in bigger areas. You know, so there's nothing we can do about it. Now. Right, the maples are the main ones. They're huge roots. So, okay. Uh, Loma. The the uh, as we know, the grant for the. Loma did not go through, so uh, I would again advocate that we move forward on that. And uh, we had created an ordinance and a plan for that, but I would like to uh, refer that item to the Rain Ready Committee just to make sure that everything's uh, as it's supposed to be. Make sure that every that uh, they're on board with it, and uh, and make sure that it's doable, actionable, and something and bring it back to us again let us think about it if that's what we want to do um, 
I went through on uh, Google and I looked at the map, looked at the buildings, a lot of the buildings that were there, and they're definitely buildings that would be nice to not uh, have them have floodplain trouble where if the a developer comes in and does buy the property, he doesn't have to raise it a foot, you know. So uh, I'll give you some pictures of those and maybe a storyboard, uh, which would be interesting. But I think Rain Ready has to be on board, and I guess especially. Um, since uh, the grants for uh, Belly Button Hill and uh, Bremen Heights was denied, and Jolly Homes, of course, but Jolly Homes, I think we're going to be okay on. But you know, that rain fund, the pay it forward idea, has to be promoted so that we can move forward mm -hmm. on uh, flood control projects for those other two areas, well, too. My understanding was that it was only the MWRD grants yes. applications that were denied. We're still waiting here in Cook County, is that true? That is correct, but we did not apply to Cook County for the Loma. Right. They had to be right. associated with 2013. Right, course. exactly. And I'm, I'm glad you brought the Loma back up so that we can have it, you know, so that it's still in discussion. Right. But before we move forward to um, allocate any funds, I would like to wait till the village hears back from Cook County to see if we've gotten grants for some of the other items. I mean, I still feel that we should do something with the LOMA, but before we allocate any village funds towards the LOMA, I want to make sure that we don't need to use those funds first for neighborhoods that really do flood. So well, I think the idea with the LOMA, well, I, again, I, that's why I want to refer it back to Ring Ready, and I think I'd like to, that discussion to happen there, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, the idea with the LOMA was to solve the problem of the neighborhood that you know, is paying flood. high insurance and also that we can actually do downtown development because right now with the buildings the way they are, I don't think it'd be a waste of time to do downtown development. There's mm -hmm. no way we would we would have to bother. And I but, but and I agree. But, but again, the other problem is I think we hopefully we can do two kill two birds with one stone with the the rain fund mm -hmm. would do exactly what you're talking about. I wouldn't want to do the Loma without the rain fund, mm -hmm. but the rain fund would do would fund some of those engineering mm -hmm. studies because I don't, I'm, I'm unclear, but the, the preliminary study, this would just be preliminary studies. Is that right? For, right, and we'd have to do it, because you've done really two studies for Charlie Holmes, the preliminary and then the... We do one study, the phase, phase one for Charlie Holmes. Okay, so you, you really need another study for Called phase two, which is designed. <laughs> okay, right. so again, if we had that rain fund and we wanted to say, well, we need it for Jolly Homes, great, we'd have the the money for the for mm -hmm. Jolly Homes, right. you know. But again, I think it should be discussed at Rain Ready because I, that's the concept. Now, again, whether it's something mm -hmm. that's recommended by Rain Ready, we need the we need the approval of Rain Ready, I think, before we move. I, and I would agree. And we have to discuss it. Good idea. Onward and upward. Roof discussion. Everybody looked at what I gave them. And basically, um, we got uh, all the records from Public Works on the roof. From what I can see, we did a uh, full roof in 1989. And that was a rubber spray foam insulation roof. Um, we have done the police department roof twice in the period 2006 and 2008, uh, 2010, I'm sorry, we did the police department roof along with, and in 2010 we did the police department, I believe the front office, and I'm unclear as far as what we, if we did this then too, I can't tell from the map, but we didn't do the fire department. And so basically what I'm saying is, we haven't done a full roof since 1989. The full roof has done pretty well for parts of it anyway. But we also, as you notice, we have on the roof we did in 2010, there's a 20 year warranty from the company that actually is the same company that's giving us the new bid for the roof. So uh, interestingly enough, we talked with Engineer Nagel, who I learned about, learned a lot of things all the time when I talked to him. And um, uh, I guess, Trustee Ivan, you were telling me that, uh, and Trustee uh, and uh, Superintendent Sperry, that it, it seems like the water pools in a certain area on the roof from time to time, all the time, and it's always been a problem. <laughs> we know we sort of know where that is in the conference room. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, Engineer Nagel 
talked about the need, if we were going to go through with a new roof, to have an architect do it, not the roof company. Uh, mm -hmm. Part of it is maybe the structural, of the structure of the roof. And uh, I think Engineer Nagel talked about we can get some green credits, uh, awesome. possibly if we uh, work with ComEd. So, um, and maybe the government other, other credits. But I don't know what direction you want to go with right now. Uh, um, Trustee uh, Crowley will talk about uh, her her plan to have the structure of the building looked at. I don't know if I we want I think it's it. our plan. I think well, well, well whatever. Out. Okay, fine. <laughs> Police department. I'm, I'm a little little elf. But the bottom bottom line is, I don't know where we want to go with this. Uh, do we want to try to? And as far as I I know from my paperwork, Trustee Gillis, I don't know of any patching <coughs> that I can pinpoint in an invoice since that roof was done in 2010. So maybe we have, I don't know. Maybe it's a build, I, I really don't know. But as far as I know from the two folders I have, there hasn't been any patching to the roof. I saw patching for other times, you know, from different different areas, but not that. So I don't know if the, if the roofer is contending that we have patched it and you know that voided the warranty but according to this in 2010 we had a 20 year and warranty is this preservation services claiming that our warranty is void i don't know well if we're having a roof problem and the roof is leaking and we've got this contract from 2010 that we signed to do the whole roof on the whole building no 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 that was just the police department and the front office i believe it shows you on the site. It says North look Roof, at, look South at the back. Roof. Look at the back. Next page. Look at the back, and that hopefully that sort of tells what's going on. This is what they... This, this drawing does not identify... This is what they did. Well, it doesn't that's identify police. police department, whoever. No, it doesn't, but that's, no. the, that's the police station. Okay, that's North, right? Yeah, and don't, okay. look at, don't look at North according to them. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, this is identified as north south. So right. how are we supposed to know? If you if you look at if you look at it, so they didn't replace the whole entire. No, roof. not in 2010. <clears throat> 1989, we replaced the whole roof. But at this point, we're still having the same leaking problem with the roof that they replaced, I believe. Well, and it does, have a, 20, come and replace and it does it have a 20 year warranty. So uh, that's one thing. I don't understand. Is it the north roof that's leaking or the south roof? I believe it's the north roof. Is the police department doesn't have any leaking problems? Oh, really? Yeah, they're You have leaking problems? Okay. Well, so the south I'm roof is over the, the police, department. police department. Right. Because I believe this area up here is the fire department right there. I believe. So the south roof, which it actually was done, interestingly enough, it was done twice within this period of two years. I don't understand that, but anyway. How was it done twice? It was done in 2008, it was done in 2010. The 2008 one, I believe, if I remember, was really not acceptable for a lot of reasons. And we got, we did it over because we, the original purpose of it, it didn't work out too right, too good. Andrel, Andrel roof, I believe it was. It was more of a spray roof as, I, as I'm reading so it, We're not knowing what north, I'm talking what's about. What's this north roof area? The whole front of the village that hall? That is actually west. Yeah. It's yes, actually the west, west not yes. north. Right. That's and the south got got is actually east. And so, <laughs> that's right. Yes. So what is this little, what is this little conference room here? North roof. North roof. So north that roof. was replaced? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was replaced. Is there a recommendation coming? I recommend that we tell them to fix the roof. Yeah. Beyond that, I don't think we should do. I'm sorry, Superintendent Spear, I'm dropping the gun. What is your recommendation? Uh, would you advice and get an outside uh, you know, architect to look at the roof and give us a recommendation rather than a roofing company? Well, so you, so you don't think they should? We should just ask them to re, to fix the roof under their warranty? Yeah. Should well, we execute I, the warranty? But I mean, if we're going to do it. It's leaking. I've said that's not the only spot that's leaking. Here and apparently the police department too. 
So, I mean, that's under their, should be under their warranty. Now, any more than that, I thought the recommendation, if we wanted to go forward with the road, first of all, we, I think we should wait until we find out what the structure of the building is. But if the building structure is acceptable, then I think Engineer Nagel's uh, was right, was hit the ball out of the park like he usually does, and saying that the architect can advise us on a, a, maybe an updated structure for the roof that would uh, be cost efficient and structurally efficient. Is that okay? Okay. Who's going to so talk? To can I? Can I say? Yes, I'm we, sorry. You know, we are work. We I did email everybody the results of the first um, architect that came out. There's two quotes. Um, I'm also going to call the architect company that the village has been using because I didn't know we had one. Don Morris. Maybe we should, if we decide at some point to go with that architect, maybe we just add that on instead of calling a separate one. Well, I thought the gentleman you called was a structural engineer, not an architect. He's an architect. Oh, he's an. I mean, he owns an architect company. Okay. Right. Was Well, did you? He he referred us to the other person. The um, I think I I, you were on the email where he he said he would not be able to do that, but someone that you had worked with and they had worked with in the past that was his referral to get a quote. So I I emailed the quote that I got and the second one. You know. I, Sandy, I didn't get it. I sent both of them in the last two days. Uh -huh. Could you resend it to me when you have time? Yeah, I will. I, mean, I sent one today, and I sent the other one yes, late last night. Okay. But if we had two quotes from the two architects, then it would give us a better idea. Exactly, and we could just add, if we wanted to do the architect, you know, just to have him do that in connection with him looking at the roof anyway. Right, and we also have to decide if... Uh, well, if we're changing right. the subject, but if they want us, want them to do the mechanical part, we want our people to do the mechanical part. But that's another subject. And I let me finish up uh, my subject, um, which would be the water bill explanation and and uh, uh, the seminar on uh, how to save on your water bill. Did everybody get my write up? And hopefully you didn't laugh too hard. But what did you think of it? What what comments do you have? What should I change? Did you think it was okay or what? You sent it? Oh, I'm sorry, it's on the, it's in the, it's, it's in the board packet. Board packet. Second to the last page. Could we uh, read it uh, and have a review of it next, next sure. meeting with our comments and stuff sure. like that instead uh, of doing it right now? Sure. And I wanted just to explain what the workshop was going to be. And I think, you know, my idea for the workshop and think about this would be that uh, uh, people would um, people would could come with questions about their water bills that they're totally confused by our explanation, but also at the same time that we help them uh, lower their water bill by having a workshop on how to lower your water bill. And I think that would cover two different uh, avenues. Maybe, maybe there's more, but one would be plumbing. You know, was there plumbing retrofits to your house that will save money on your water bill? Number two would be, I, I would think it would be uh, landscaping, gardening. In other words, how to cut down on the on your gar on your watering bill during the summer, or maybe the pool too. I don't know. But I was hopeful that we could get someone at uh, Grills that was. Uh, could, could be part of this workshop and give us some updates on that, and then we would hopefully lead them to buy grills. And second of all, I think we might be able to get somebody from uh, the University of Illinois Extension in Orland, and maybe they could talk about the uh, landscaping part of it. And you give us a <coughs> about about that. If you have any other areas we should cover on that, then you know, let, me, let me know. By me? Plumber. Plumber and landscaper. Yeah. So, I mean, well, I was hoping that girls could talk about... We also have our village plumbing inspector that could probably do it. Well, I was hoping to, because girls sells product, I was hoping to lead people to their product. But, oh. that, but I mean, maybe both of them could do it. I don't know. But, you know <coughs> girls obviously doesn't handle uh, everything in the plumbing area, so maybe we think about that. Okay. I'll uh, read that, and uh, I'll shut up now. I mean, thank you for your time. 
I'm done. Okay. Uh, Trustee Crowley. Thank you, sir. Just a couple things tonight. First on my agenda, which I know everybody was really excited to talk about, was the, uh, I had on here the approval for the request, for, uh, the RFQ for uh, the new public safety facility. I'm going to ask that we table that discussion until next week. Um, I have to say I was very pleasantly surprised with all of the wonderful comments and feedbacks I got from everybody. Um, I got a lot of positive um, ideas and things like that that Chief Delaney and I talked about. Um, Engineer Nagel helped us out. Trustee Killerly was influential in helping us out. Everybody really kind of pitched in and said, what about this, what about that? And we are, we have made some changes and we will be able to make sure that we accurately get out the red line copy and the change copy so everyone can look at it. And I, we just didn't have time to do that between Friday and today. So if that, nobody minds, I will be putting that on the agenda for next week. Table for approval next week. Yes. Okay. So um, I think we're our, you're just about done with the final revision, too. So thank you, everybody. I know this has been a, a long process, but hopefully by next week we'll be ready to do a final discussion and approval of it. Um, next, um, I just wanted to make a few notes uh, of things that we have coming up in the police department. Um, we are, with the success of the last senior seminar, um, we've been getting a lot of calls and, and, and requests for additional seminars. So we are, the police department is putting on another one on September 13th. Um, so that'll be, so that was on the water bill. If you got your water bills yesterday or the day before, it was on there. Um, we'll be publicizing that uh, in the near future too. I know they've had a couple of Facebook pages, but we'll make sure we get it on the website. We'll make sure we get it out to the churches, send it out to the seniors that we have registered with our water program before and the code red. Is it on there already? It's on the calendar, but I don't know if the information is on there. I saw. I think I saw it on the calendar. I didn't get a water bill this round. Um, was the note on the water bill about uh, from the building department about building addresses? Yes. Being identified? It was, okay. I thought it was from the fire department. It was from the building department? I guess I just assumed it was the fire department. Being four inches hot, tall. Mm -hmm. There were three things on there. It was the senior. Okay. It was the addresses. Yeah, child, child identification program. That's oh. the other thing that the police okay, department good. is doing. So, um, Thank you. Yeah, that, those three things were on the water bill, at least on mine when I got it. Uh, next, I do want to start plugging away for everybody for National Night Out, as Jean Bartecki mentioned. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of, uh, you know, it's a lot of coordination. We've been, you know, we've gotten a lot of help from the department heads, but we really need volunteers. So if anybody's interested in volunteering for the evening, even if you could just do it for a couple hours, we'd greatly appreciate it. Um, there's a lot of wonderful things scheduled. The, the CPC outdid themselves again with the golf outing and made a very nice profit. Um, so they, they are again able to, with their fundraising skills, um, pay for all of the things associated with National Night Out. So it's a huge endeavor. Um, it's not a hundred dollar endeavor, it's thousands of dollars. Um, to have all the activities, to have all of the entertainment that we have. So last year was a huge success. We really look forward to having everybody come and, and help us again. I know that letters went out to a lot of organizations and uh, other committees asking if you wanted to have a table, um, if you could get back to the CPC as soon as possible, let them know. Or if you know of somebody who would ha has information that you think is good for the village, you can you know reach out to me, reach out to Frank or Jim, anybody, and let us know. We'll reach out to them and see if they'd like to set up a table and provide information. Okay. Um, I mentioned a little bit. Uh, I think last week that the or two weeks ago, sorry, the police department has started a uh, camera registration program. It seems to be going pretty well. I've seen a lot. I've gotten a lot of positive feedbacks myself. I've also seen a lot of positive feedbacks on social media. Um, we're going to try and get the information out there again to all the networks that we've kind of developed over the last year. But anybody who has a camera, um, you know, video camera, video surveillance outside, and you want to register it, um, it's helpful for you. It's helpful for your neighbors. What will happen is, in the event there that an emergency situation happens in that area, the police department will know who has active recording devices, and they can contact them and say, "Hey, listen." We had this happen at the end of the block. Could could you look at your video from this date to the, this time to this time 
and see if it captured anything. So um, we're hoping that that word spreads. We're gonna. I'm going to talk to Trustee Kevney about getting it out to the businesses as well, because I know that that was kind of an area we didn't have a lot of context for. So mm -hmm. if we could, we're going to, I was going to ask you to work on that. Mm -hmm. um, over the last couple couple months, and especially the last couple weeks, um, I had asked the CPC to put on their agenda uh, our animal control and care uh, ordinance, policy, procedures. Um, one of the things that I've, I've had a lot of residents tell me, I've seen a lot of postings, I've gotten a lot of feedback for is, we're trying to create a community where people come out and walk, people come out and talk to their neighbors, <coughs> people come out and enjoy the facilities that we have, and if people are afraid to walk down the street because they're stray dogs, or if people are afraid to, you know, walk their dog for fear, you know, we want to try and address that. And recently there's been a lot of question about how do we handle those things, and, and not just as a village, but, you know, when we, when we do have these dogs, what happens. So I did send out an email to the departments that, are, that I think are involved in that process in one way or another. Um, I have asked for some information. We are going to have a meeting. I've asked uh, the attorney, Attorney Valdez, to go over our current ordinance. Um, and to make suggestions for revisions based on our home rule. Um, and I'm looking for suggestions. So CPC is going to continue to have it on their um, agenda. Um, we're going to start talking about it a little bit more after National Night Out. But if anybody has suggestions or comments or concerns or things that they'd like to see, you know, shoot me a quick email, give me a call, and you know, we're, we're going to try and work to make sure we have a comprehensive plan in place for animal care and control. Uh, what else do I have? Structural engineer, I did send out um, a couple of emails. Um, we did have a, a very quick walkthrough last Tuesday with um, one firm. We, at that point, we did not know if we had any plans or structural plans for the entire village. So what they did is they sent us a quote on what it would cost us to get this um, analysis of our village hall done and it was a lot higher than I had expected it to be. Um, however, one of the thing, one of the components that they had put in there was that in addition to giving us an evaluation and a cost is that they would also do the plans of Village Hall and Public Works so that we would have that for our reference. I re reached out to a couple people and everyone's real helpful. Steve was actually able to find some plans from like the 1300s, I think they are, by the way they look. Um, Engineer Nagels um, uh, kindly offered to scan those and put them into a PDF for me so that we can send those because he had suggested in his second quote when I said, please take the plan writing out because it was a lot of money. So we would have a comparison. He had suggested that um, if we could find some of those plans, he might be able to update them for, and or bring that cost of just the analysis down even more. So I'm gonna, as soon as I get those, I will send them to him. I'm also gonna reach out to the uh, architect that, that Trustee Cavani was talking about to see if he could give us a quote so we would have a couple comparisons. Um, hopefully by next week I'll have some more information on that. And I think that's all I have tonight. That's it? Mm -hmm. All right, one of the department heads. <coughs> Chief Hotline. Yes, sir. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, we have our, uh, Trying to get a PhD cancer jack or jack event coming up again. Um, kind of last minute, we're putting together a bowling tournament. Uh, I don't know if everybody's been told about July 15th, which is next this weekend. Um, on Sunday, 3 o'clock at Oak Forest Bowl, it's $25 a person, pizza, shoes, um, bowling games, of course, and, and buffet. All the money's get donated for a jack or jack event, which is later in the month on the 21st. Probably. Uh, but they're still going to do the fundraiser online, so you can donate online. They're trying to get, do more money this way by getting more people to show up for the, the bowling tournament and donate that money toward it. Um, the, the actual fire procure fundraising day is July 21st. That's at 11 o'clock at St. Xavier. That's when they do the events and all that there. Uh, and, and again, the bowling, term, the bowling uh, fundraiser is July 15th, 3 o'clock at Oak Forest Bowl. And then the only other thing we get another thing coming up is the fourth annual fundraiser Road to Health. That's the one Firefighter Kelly runs. Uh, that's for uh, suicide awareness, PTSD, 
and bullying for kids. So it's kind of three things that he uh, donates for. So he splits the money. Uh, last time was, I think he said $44,000 he made. He can make $60,000 this year and uh, give him $20,000 each uh, organization. But that's a motorcycle ride. Um, so you can also go in a car. They have horses and cars going. Um, I have all the information here. It's, it's on the village website, I believe. I think we're going to put it on the website for them. Yeah, you can put this on the website, right? Yes. Okay. It's on the village website also. That's Saturday, August 4th. All the information is on the village website. That's yes, Excellent. Chief Delaney. Yes, sir. Just one quick point. Um, a reminder that the third leg of the Special Olympics is a 5 0 3 0 race track up in Joliet. It's July 21st. Um, the fundraiser, they, based on how much money you rank, is how they um, will line the cars up. So whoever earns the most money will get the first spot in the league. Um, currently, Sergeant Tebow is number three in the race based on how much that he's um, raised, which is phenomenal. Um, he's already got $18,000 this year, which is about 15 to get on the t-shirt. So we'll be on the t-shirt for the second time and the second time in two years. Um, so he's a, done a great job on um, coordinating that event. Um, so come on out after the fire um, department fundraiser to the Joliet Racetrack for the evening event. Chairman. How many time does it start? Um, it's kind of the free stuff um, that usually starts around like 4 or 5 o'clock, but I think last year the race didn't go off until about 9 p.m. 9? I was late. I had to cut outside my daughter with me, but... Um, it's packed, too. Yeah. So, I mean, it is packed. Get there early. Last year there weren't that many cars. They got 24 cars this year, so they're actually going to do three races. They're doing two qualifying and then oh. the actual race, so... Um, you might have to uh, race twice, hopefully it doesn't pop his tires again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, and, and the one thing, I don't know if anybody's ever seen it, but probably the net, besides the fact, you know, we were almost, we almost won. Um, but one of the things that I took away from it is the awards and the medals are awarded by children from the Special Olympics at the end. Yeah. It was very touching and very heartwarming, so it's really a good time. And there was fireworks. And there was fireworks. <laughs> she was in a spare. Uh, just one quick update on the Brennan retention. Uh, I've been in touch with the uh, superintendent of the project over there. And they assured me that they are going to, um, I actually called the first line and put the fire in front of there. She's the one I think that's possible. Tina, in the, in the black. Yeah, I left her last oh. today. Um, they're going to address the trail <coughs> between the tennis courts and the street. Yeah. They're going to get that to drain into the pond and they're going to install an under drain in the pond so that any accumulating water that doesn't go out initially will accumulate and go down mm -hmm. and, and drain and this way they can maintain it. That's the way it was originally designed and then they claimed that MWRD told them they couldn't do it that way. And then when I told them that you can't live with this pond like this, right. they said they went back down to MWRD and they said that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. me or what, I think yeah. they are. Yeah. So, the uh, email I got on the 90th, which is on Monday, said that they're waiting um, yesterday or time frame. And uh, we are aware, we are aware, expecting, he's aware that we are expecting an ASAP. So we're going to keep that And is that going to take care of the water that's pooling right at the fence line, too? Because they've got issues with water pooling at the fence yeah, line. Yeah, they're going to address everything. Okay. Yeah, I'll stay on it. Okay. And do you know who the homeowner can contact at Bremen with regards to the trees, getting the trees cut back? Because some of those trees are like hitting their gutter and their roof. Yeah. Um, Burke. Uh, Bill Burke. Bill Burke, yeah. I guess it's right. Okay. Yeah, if you'll email it to me or text it to me, I'll get it over to Tina. Okay. That's all. And your Nagel. Mayor, I got two items. Our first item is that next week we anticipate the approval of board bid for the CWG MMT payment project. Uh, so we're excited about that. And the other item is that just here with Mr. Kelly about the water conservation. I'm on the Illinois American Water Works Association Public Outreach Committee for Water Conservation. And I have a ton of stuff I can share with you. We also have a package we can give to great grade schools where we can actually go in and give a half hour presentation or science class. I'm sure Mr. Spirit would love to volunteer with me to do that. <laughs> Water operator, no one can say it better than Joe. <laughs> These presentations at various schools, it's really fun. The kids get uh, like a <coughs> tablet to put in there. 
sneaks leak in at night and do a science project. It's just fun stuff like that. But it kind of gets the word down to the kid and starts telling to your mom and dad, and you also look green and you're preserving water. So I'll be happy to share this with you next So week. I can throw this in the garbage? Do I need to email? Oh, <laughs> to children. Oh, you know, so. most of the time stuff is too. <laughs> yeah, you're right, exactly. Treasurer <laughs> Britton? Deputy Clerk um, Blackie. Just a moment. Um, do you want to mention the budget <laughs> that we brought? I thought it said you didn't mention it. Okay, so then the, the latest and greatest, which is probably going to be changed again. Yes, but, well. But if the uh, budget is on your desks, uh, edited, revised for you, um, July 9th, uh, I will edit it again to take out the street that I just put in. Um, and so it is ready to be looked at. I maybe discuss discussed next week for the appropriations budget, right? I the next week is not the appropriations. It's the following week. Following week? What's the vote on it? The so we're going to vote on it. Yes. So. But we can discuss it next week. Yeah. Vote on That's it. The appropriations ordinance. Yes, the appropriations ordinance we'll be voting on. The appropriations oh. ordinance, which has been published in the newspaper. Perfect. But we're not voting on that next week. Two All right. weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Okay. Is that it? Yes. <laughs> Deputy Clerk Blackie. Attorney Valdez. Two brief matters uh, at the next board meeting, uh, regular board meeting. Well, actually, probably at the next board meeting, uh, we'll be asking uh, to be put on the consent agenda the resolution of the Sorensen litigation pursuant to the parameters uh, that were discussed in closed session with the board. Uh, the other matter is the outstanding FOIA litigation that we have going now. This individual is now filing frivolous motions naming the village. Um, if you recall, this is an individual who got a pauper's petition to file 17 FOIA appeals, circum uh, going right through the public counselor requirement. Uh, nevertheless, because he filed it, 17 municipalities had to go to court to ask that the case be dismissed. It's been set. Uh, I imagine that already thousands and tens of thousands of dollars have been expended by all the multiple municipalities responding to this. He's now filed another motion. I've spoken to the village litigator, uh, Mr. Murphy, who uh, expressed uh, that the village would be interested in pursuing sanctions against the individual, as it, our position is, is that not only did we respond, did the clerk's office respond to the FOIA request, it did so uh, beyond what was required by the law. That's it. Thank you, sir. Uh, under my business, I just wanted to uh, start plugging the multi and charity golf outing coming up uh, Monday, August 13th at the Milwaukee Country Club. Looking for a, uh, hopefully a big turnout this year, a bigger turnout than last year. So uh, Maria has uh, players with her and up in the front desk. And we also have a Facebook page, the Mulkeen Charity Golf Outing Facebook page. Uh, received correspondence from Maria Pappas, Cook County Treasurer, about uh, still a number of, quite a number of seniors in Milwaukee that have yet to file their senior uh, freeze. So, uh, uh, Clerk Mosco and Deputy Clerk Clackey have been working together, and uh, Gwen Walton will be assisting our seniors at some point. We'll let people know when. Next Friday. Next Friday. Okay, we'll update, yeah. And we'll put that out there every way we can put that out there. Two weeks from Friday, sorry, July 20th. July 20th. So, all right, so we'll get that out there. Um, there had to be 100 plus. 133. Um, the Lothian seniors still on the list that have not to filed. Out, have not filed. Right. I, Previously yes. qualified for uh, homeowners exemptions and senior freeze, and those letters will all be in the mail tomorrow. You okay. have to file every uh, year. Every year. I'm you not sure if everyone knows it. Yeah, Jean. Um, I went. We, Mike and I went over on Monday, Tuesday, and um, we had. Back in February, we had filed, no, we put in for both the exemptions. For some reason, a lot of people, they didn't put all the exemptions in because, um, we, yeah, I mean, we got it last year. We didn't get it this year. You mean someone at the clerk's office didn't over, enter all the data? Yeah. Okay. So we went over to the courthouse, and it took us about an hour and a half, but 
we have our assumptions at this point. Good deal. There's so. also something on the front page of the messenger that you can actually call the assessor's office instead of going to the courthouse. Right. Well, when you call, they, they can't process it right away. You have to do it in person. All right, so we'll get that word out to people that they can come here and Ms. Walton will help out. She's already helped out a number of seniors, I believe, in getting their paperwork together and filing. So, uh, Karen, I got this today. The uh, please to inform that the amendment to the grant agreement number I gig uh, 1702 has been fully executed. By this. Did you get this? No, I didn't. And I actually got an email from Springfield asking, did we receive the extension? We did. Uh, you were carbon copy, but you want this? Yeah, because I didn't get anything. Okay, it's all yours. Gee, thanks. Good job. Well, this this, this is. The about fifty-eight thousand dollars that we still have from the state of Illinois. When we get the hundred and fifty thousand, then we can complete that permeable parking lot. Thank you. You will respond to them. Um, got a letter from the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District regarding the uh, watershed management ordinance permit applicability for the Midlothian Turnpike from Central to Avenue Pulaski. Uh, we got copied in it because. There's a very small part of the whole thing that would be part of it. Um, they will have to uh, apply for a WMO permit. That, that's interesting information. Um, Joyce ain't here? No. Comcast is continuing an effort to keep you updated and informed, uh, providing information regarding the availability of MGM HD on Comcast channel lineup in your community. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in previous communication, they erroneously informed us that uh, June 1st, 1st, MGM HD would not be available on the channel lineup, but it, it in fact does remain on the channel lineup. So, with that for choice. Uh, and uh, Mayor Lou Presta and Crestwood is having a golf outing on August 29th. And that is all I have tonight. Clerk Mosco. Oh, uh, we'd also like to wish our our wonderful uh, village clerk and a good friend of all of ours, a very happy birthday, and I believe we'd like to sing for him. Yes. 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 party request that was in uh, your board packet for the board members. It was not actually for June 28th. That's the date it was received. Uh, the request is for July 21st from 2.30 p.m. until midnight, and this would be the 143 um, 100 block of Keeler. If no one has any objections, uh, we will send the letter and let them know that that's okay. Uh, also in your board packet is the FOIA report for the month of June, and as the mayor mentioned, um, we are addressing the list of, uh, of our properties that we've gotten. Uh, Deputy Clerk Kalecki and um, Mrs. Walton drafted a letter today and it is ready to go out and, uh, to tomorrow's, will be in tomorrow's mail. It will include the application and instructions for what folks need to do. And on Friday, July 20th from 9 to 4, um, we will have a, uh, a little bit of an open house here for the seniors to come and Mrs. Walton will help them complete the paperwork. Great. And there were, I believe the number was 133, but it was between 100 and 200 to be exact. And that is all I have tonight. Excellent, sir. Thank you. Uh, seeing as there's no further business coming before the board, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? In the chair's opinion, the ayes have it. Meeting adjourned. Yes, I do agree. Okay. I want to Good job, everyone. I got to give time. Hey, Tom, I'm going to give you those. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Das ist halt doch eins.